You were excited for geometry? No, geometry. Oh, I thought you said well, geometry. geometry. I'm not really excited for geometry. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, you're not even in geometry right now. <laughs> oh, that's from my Algebra 2 class. It was their due now. Okay, so the first one is asking us to evaluate f of g of 2. Do you want me just to put some problems up, you try them, and then we'll go over them? Should we do it that way? Okay. There are some problems.
Sorry guys, letter D is going to be a long one. I didn't realize. Oops. All right, are we ready to go over this? Yes. Absolutely not. I'm stuck on the D one. The D one? Yeah, I probably did it wrong. It's a lot of steps. I'm getting big numbers here. I got a really big number, yeah. I got 1,000 something. Yeah. yeah. We know. We're not. You got 10,000 something? Did I leave off a one? F of F of yeah. F of one. So the first one is a. Oh. No, no, it should still be 1,100 something, no? And yeah, so 106 times 106. Oh, it should be 11. Yeah, you're right. It should be 11,000. Yeah. Okay, should we forget about D? Yeah. Oh, you did it? Okay, okay. I didn't realize it was that big. So. Oh, my God. I don't know. 768? I don't know. Okay. Should we just take away one of the Fs? Yeah. Yeah, take away the last one. Yeah, take away the last one because then it becomes a lot more feasible. No. Just take away one of the Fs. So it should just be F of F of 1. That's so much more doable, the F of F of 1. Yeah. There we go, that's much better. Now we're ready? It's gonna be a week review. All right, what do you all get for letter A? Two. Two. Anybody need to see me do that? What about letter B? X squared plus 5X. X squared plus 5X. Anybody need to see me do that one? Yes? No? Maybe so? All right. Letter C. Same. Anybody need to see me do that one? All right. Letter D, we took off one of the Fs. 108 is, oh wait, I didn't get 108, I got 106. You might have just added. Anybody need to see me do letter D? 
All right, what about letter E? Don't skip it, Nico. What about letter E? Six. All right. So you didn't sub in the one first. That's brutal. Okay, now you know. That's why we review. Okay, next one. Yes. That stinks. No, it's coming at ten o'clock tomorrow. Yeah, but after three hours of like those like basketball like, classes. I know. It's okay. Okay, guys. So if we're trying, Nico, we have to review. If we are, tr if I'm asking you, are f of x and g of x inverses? And let me give you them. F of x is equal to um, x over x plus 1 and g of x is equal to um, 2 minus x over x plus 1. Actually, no, this is just x. There we go. 2 minus x over x. And I'm just making things up. So if they're inverses, if they are inverses, what do we need to show? Okay. Um, that they are. Oh, that um, f of x, not f, f of g of x is uh, x, and then f of g of x plus f of x is x. You got it. We need to show, this is what we need to show, that f of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x. If we both show, if we show that they're both x, then they're inverses. What if they're not? If they're not equal to x, then they are not inverses. Ion, headphones out. You're not even paying attention to me. What are you doing? You're watching something. Meg, what's he looking at? What's he doing? Just staring at my classroom. That's sad. Okay. So let's do this. Let's start off with f of g of x first. So now g of x is 2 minus x over x. So we're going to do f of 2 minus x over x. What does this mean? This means I go to f of x. And wherever I see an x, what am I sub subbing in? Anytime I see an x, what am I subbing in? <laughs> 2 minus x over x. That's what I'm subbing in anytime I see an x in f of x. So this is going to be 2 minus x over x over 2 minus x over x plus 1. And remember, I told you, when we have the stacked fraction bars, what can we do to eliminate the denominators? Multiply by what would be the GCF. What would be the, I mean, the um, LCD, the common denominator. What would be the common denominator here? X. So I'm going to multiply everything top and bottom by X. In the numerator, what happens with these Xs? They cancel out. So in the numerator, I only have a 2 minus x. Are we good with that? Yeah. In the denominator, this x <coughs> needs to be distributed to this first fraction, but also to, or sorry, multiplied with this first fraction, but also multiplied with the 1. When it gets multiplied with the 1, what's 1 times x? x. What happens when it gets multiplied with the 2 minus x over x? What happens with these x's? they cancel. So then I'm just left with 2 minus x. What's 2 minus x plus x? 2. So then we are left with 2 minus x over 2. 
Can I cancel these twos? Thank you, Nico. 90% of you on the last test canceled out these twos if there was something like this. Are we allowed to cancel out those twos? No. So right away, are these going to be inverses? No. Yes. If it were 2x over 2, then we would cancel them out. Cancel through multiplication, never addition or subtraction. From sign. That's so annoying. All right, let's keep going. Next one. It is a parabola. The inverse of a parabola should be a parabola. Do we agree? The inverse of a parabola should be a parabola, just like planted somewhere else, right? So we have a way of finding the inverse. Who remembers what we do to find the equation of the inverse? Charles. Switch x and y. Excellent. We are going to switch x and y. So the initial equation is y equals x squared minus 16. Do you all want to try this on your own and then we'll go over it? Or do you want me to do it with you? On your own? Go for it. Um, you switch X and Y, then you isolate the Y, exactly. And we're not graphing these ever, right? We are not graphing this, no. Um, you are there is going to be a point where you do have to graph the function and its inverse. I'll do one like that next. Do all the functions have main domains and stuff? For this one, no. For the one we, the next one, yes. So, we're just isolating y. so this one, I just want the equation. Yep. So something a little bit different. I'll give you one where we, I'll give you an example where you would have to graph it. I'll show you. That would be on the test, yes. So when I just ask for the equation, I won't have you graph it, but there will be one where I do ask you to graph. And I'll show you a question like that next. Okay, so what should we do? We should switch X and Y. And then our goal is to solve for Y. We need to isolate the Y. So first step, add that 16 over. But to undo a square, what must we take? Square root. Square root. But guys, this is the most important, well, they're not the most important, but this is such a key part here. When you square root a number, like if I have x squared equals 16, what's my answer? x squared equals 16. Is my answer just 4? It's plus minus 4. When you take the square root, of something, don't we have to account for the positive and negative? So this is going to be y equals plus minus the root of x plus 16. This is what makes the parabola, guys. Because the square root, what does the square root look like? It's not a parabola. The square root is a shooting star. But when you have a positive shooting star and a negative shooting star, they come together to make a parabola. That's why we need the plus or minus there. So now we've done what we needed to do. This is going to be, you now replace the y with f to the negative first power of x equals plus or minus the root of x plus 16. 
don't forget to replace it back with um, the inverse function. Yeah, yes. So if you don't do that, it's like wrong. I mean, it's not wrong, but like it's not fully not correct. I'd take up like half point off or something. That's exactly what yeah, I want you to then replace it with the inverse function. Okay, do you guys want to see one where I would ask you to graph? Yeah. Okay. Oh, there is one where there is a type of one where I would ask you to graph. Oh, you're defending me, Nico. No, I said the last one we went in. I don't know what number we're up to. It doesn't matter. <laughs> So a question like this would be worth like eight points. Do you want to try it on your own or you want us to do it together? Together. together. You, got, you got outvoted, Nico. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is figure out the domain and range of our original function. So we have f of x is equal to x squared plus 2. And I'm telling you x is greater than or equal to 2. I'm already restricting the what? The domain. So our domain here is x is greater than or equal to 2. So now what happens is I have a restricted domain. I need to figure out what my restricted range is that goes with that restricted domain. Does that make sense? So now do we all agree this is a parabola? This was a problem that went up to, right? But we're restricted now based on this. So what I need to do is I need to find out what happens when x is 2. What is my corresponding y going to be? Because it's saying x is greater than or equal to 2. We know it just keeps going up forever, right? So once I find out where y is at 2, I know it's just going to keep going up forever from that point. So now we have... Um, y equals x squared plus 2, right? Isn't that our equation? So now we're going to have y is equal to 2 squared plus 2. So what is y equal to? 6. So what is our range going to be? y has to be greater than or equal to 6. Are we ready to sketch this? Yes? Yeah. Okay, so we all know it's a parabola, right? Yeah. But only part of that parabola is showing. So we want x is 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We want y is 6. So that's this part right here. Everything to the left of that, is it going to be showing everything to the left of it? No, only to the right. And what's happening to the right of it? It's just going up forever. So it shouldn't even be that curved. It should be like something like that. Because this was like, that, yeah, it was like something like that before, but then we got rid of that part. Um, 
it's not going to have like boxes. So it's just like a table. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is the original. Now, what do we need to find? The inverse. So let's go. We have the original is y equals x squared. What was it? Plus two. Yeah. How do we find the inverse? Switch x and y. Solve for y. Now this time, we're taking the square root, right? Yeah. Technically, do I need the plus or minus? Because when you take a square root, it's usually plus or minus. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about it. Yeah. Well, let's leave it for now. Let's talk about the domain and range. So remember, the domain of the inverse is what? Range of the original. So do we all agree my new domain is going to be x is greater than or equal to 6? And my new range is going to be y is greater than or equal to 2. Do we agree that our domain and range are both positive? So do I need that negative for that? No. If you were to put it, I wouldn't take points off because you still have the restricted domain, so the negative part wouldn't be included. So let's say you happen to forget it here, that's okay, you're still good because it's in the restricted domain and range. So now we have our inverse, we have our inverse domain and range, what's the last thing we need to do? Graph it. So now we're basing this off our new domain and range. So now we are greater than 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and y is 2. Now remember, let me erase here. When we're graphing, isn't it the same as a reflection over the line y equals x, <coughs> right? It's a reflection over that line. So if I were to fold this paper over, how would the arrow be pointing if I were to fold this paper over, over this line, corner to corner? Yeah. yeah. Do you guys see that? So if we're taking this and folding it over. No? Nico, why are you staring at me like that? No, I said before it, but like, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's do it on the paper. Let's get a paper. So we're making like one big graph, not two small ones? No, we're making two different ones. But I want you to get the visual of what the inverted one would be so you get it right. But the one you showed before, right? Like one that the, like x was two, y was six, and then one was y was two, x was six. So, oh, this is not worth it for me. So, I'm trying to trying to show you if you were to fold it, that doesn't work. You have to fold the other way. How? Like, well, this is the line. Right, but fold it on the like line. The, I'm trying. Other to. way, like that. Yeah, but that won't help me. I want to show where the new one's going to be. Yeah, you do it. I just want to give him the visual. I could see it in my head. Does it help? No? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you're just trying to say now it's going down, right? Yeah, well, now this is your new point, but now where is it going? Down? Like downwards? Yeah, like that. Oh. Yeah, so like if I wrote just like that. Yeah, you're good. Oh, okay. Oh, Nico. All right. <laughs> what did I do? Let's keep going. You made you you made yourself seem so confused. I was confused. I thought, I thought you were making like one big graph and final. Oh no 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 no. I was like one like combined thing. Like how you just like the M's. No 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 M's. None of that. Okay. 
Next one. Uh, what else can I give you? So we did the inverse. We did a sketch. Oh, if I gave you a graph of like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Okay, are we ready? If I ask you to sketch the inverse of this, let's list out all the points. Well, this was supposed to be, does this look like it's one? All right, let's make it a two. So we'll make this negative two, one, and this is positive two, one, and this is zero, three. If I want to sketch the inverse, what do I do with the x and y coordinates? Swap them. You swap them, exactly. So then instead of negative 2, 1, I need 1, negative 2 right here. And instead of 2, 1, I need 1, 2. And instead of 0, 3, I need 3, 0. And then there's my inverse sketch. That's it. So I think we've covered every single type of problem you will see. We good? Yeah. Okay. So I think we're recording. Okay, so we are unit three, day four, continued. And we are going to talk about quadratic inequalities. Right, before we talk about quadratic inequalities, there's one more thing I didn't show you last class, which was um, absolute value quadratics. So let's do an example. If I have the absolute value of x squared minus 17 is equal to 8. So remember, we have two options here. We have the positive version of what's in these inequality lines, and what else do we have? not inequality, absolute value lines. And what else do we have? Don't we also have the negative version of what ends up being in these absolute value lines? So how do we represent that? We represent that as x squared minus 17 equals 8, and also x squared minus 17 equals negative 8. And then we factor. So I'm going to bring that 8 over. So we are going to have x squared minus... Um, 25 equals 0, and this is a dot, so we're x plus 5, x minus 5 equals 0, so x will equal plus or minus 5. On the other side, we are adding 8, so now we are at x squared minus 9 equals 0, and we have another dot, x plus 9 X, oh, not plus 9, x plus 3, x minus 3, and again, we're going to get a plus or minus, so x equals plus or minus 3. Is it okay if I did like x squared equals 9? So it depends. If I said to factor, then no. If I said just solve, then yes. It all depends on what the directions say. So technically there are four solutions, right? Because it could be... Uh, positive 5, negative 5, positive negative. Yeah, for this one, those are our options exactly. Like the numbers don't work, do you use like that? Um, yeah, I guess, I guess we should check them. You're right. So we go back to check them. You just plug those numbers back in. 
if it's five, but no matter what, it's going to be 25, right? Whether it's plus or minus five. So 25 minus 17, does that work out? Yes. And then the other one is three, but three squared, whether it's plus or minus is nine. Nine minus 17 is a negative eight, but the absolute value of that, it does work out. So yeah, you should be checking them. Okay, so quadratic inequalities. So what is the rule here for inequalities? So if we are multiplying two things, if I have some quantity m and I'm multiplying it by some quality quantity n. Actually, I think I'm going straight into the shortcut. Never mind this. Don't worry about the rule. The rule can confuse you. Let's just go straight into doing a problem. Let's say I have x squared minus x minus 6 is greater than 0. All right, this is a big deal, and it's going to show up throughout the whole entire year, so I can't have you forgetting this. Anytime you have a quadratic, something we can factor in x squared, and an inequality paired with a crocodile mouth, there is a certain process we are going to take. That certain process is going, I call it, test the regions. So anytime, anytime you have a quadratic inequality, so a quadratic expression and an inequality uh, crocodile mouth, you will do the process that I call test the regions. What is this process? The first thing you have to do is factor. We're going to factor. So this is easy peasy, fat, easy peasy factoring where x and x minus 3, a plus 2. We are not going to solve. We're not setting equal to solve. But what we are going to do is we're going to now get reference numbers. How do we get these reference numbers? The way you get these reference numbers is to say, if I were to solve, wouldn't x equal positive 3 and wouldn't x equal negative 2? Those are our reference numbers. And what do we do with those reference numbers? With those reference numbers, you are now going to test the regions. Between those numbers. So what does that mean? I will show you. So you go to your reference numbers. What is your smallest reference number? Three or negative two? Negative two. Negative two. So we are going to test numbers that are less than negative two. Then you're going to test between the two reference numbers. So I'm going to test between negative 2. So negative 2 is less than x, which is less than 3. And then my last region is going to test the biggest number. So x is greater than 3. Are you all caught up? Okay, so now I'm asking for this product, whatever this is on this side, these two things multiplied together, this product to be greater than zero. In order for this product to be greater than zero, I need all, I need this product to be positive or do I need it to be negative? If this is going to be greater than zero positive, right? I need this quantity times this quantity to be positive. If it's positive, then it's greater than zero, right? If this quantity times this quantity is negative, then it is less than zero. So because it's greater, we need it positive. If it were less than, then we want it to be negative. 
but this problem's greater, so we're going to be positive. So now this is how we test. Okay, so I'm going to start off by testing a number less than two. What? It, I'm sorry, less than negative two. Do we agree negative three is less than negative two? So that's what I'm going to test. So I'm going to test negative three minus three. And I don't care what the actual number is. All I care is about positive or negative. Negative three minus three. Is that positive or is that negative? Negative. So I'm going to put a negative here. All right. What about negative three plus two? Is that positive or is that negative? Negative. So now I have a negative number times another negative number. What's a negative times a negative? Positive. Did we want positive? Yes. yes, we wanted it positive. Why did we want it positive? Because we are greater than zero. We want it positive because we are greater than zero. So this is part of my solution. Let's keep going. Now I need to pick a number between negative two and positive three. Can I pick zero? Yeah, zero is between negative two and positive three, so let's try that. All right, so we're going to do zero minus three. Zero minus three, is that positive or negative? Negative. But then I have zero plus two. Is zero plus two positive or negative? Positive. A negative times a positive is a? Negative. negative. Did I want a negative product or did I want a positive product? positive. So guess what? This is no good. This is out. All right. And our last one, a, we need a number greater than three. Do we agree that four is greater than three? So let's test four. So I'm four minus three. Four minus three is positive. Then we're going to do four plus two. Four plus two is positive. A positive times a positive is a positive. Did we want a positive? Yes. So this is in our solution. So our solution is going to be x such that, so we set up our set notation. You must set up the set notation, meaning the squiggly bracket x and then a slash. x such that x is less than negative 2. Or if you want to put the union symbol, you can. X is greater than three. I might also ask you to graph the solution. I might also ask you to graph the solution. So if we were going to graph the solution, I would have negative two. I'd have a positive three. Open circle on negative two going to the left open circle and positive three going to the right. Okay, Jess? Is it possible that like some numbers in the range don't work, but others do? No. If it fits the range, all the numbers in the range will work. All right, ready to try another one? So negative x squared plus 16 is less than or equal to 0. Can I factor this as it is right now? No, what must I do? Michael? Yeah, I'm going to make x squared not negative. How? Or, can I, I'm not going to add, no, I, I like the way you're thinking, but instead of dividing by negative one, it's, it's called, what is that, pulling out a GCF of negative one. I'm going to pull out a, um, a negative one. Yes, Philip. Uh, can I pull out the box 
pi by pi uh, negative one. I mistook the sign in the process. Yeah, that was um, similar to the same of what I think Michael was saying. You absolutely can do that. So we're going to pull out a negative one, but I'm going to leave it like this just for the purpose that this sort of covers more territory of what we can see in the future. Um, but it absolutely works 100%. So now I'm actually going to leave the negative there and I'm going to factor. So I have negative one and then X plus four, X minus four is less than or equal, or sorry, this was supposed to be greater than. Sorry guys, this is supposed to be greater than or equal to zero. Now, what I think Philip and Michael were sort of heading towards is if you divide by negative one on both sides, won't that flip the sign, the inequality sign? That will work. That will absolutely work. I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to leave it like this um, just because by me leaving it like this, it covers more possibilities for other future things that might be a little bit more difficult where you can't divide it. So I'm going to show you what you do when you leave that GCF outside. Okay, so how do I know this is a test the regions type of problem? How do I know that this is a test the regions type of problem? Good, well, not only because there's an inequality, it's an inequality and what else? Paired with A? Um, no, because I didn't have to have the line underneath and it would still be a test of regions. So you, you guys nailed it. The inequality is definitely one part of it, but it can't just be an inequality because if I just had X plus four is greater than zero, I wouldn't have to test the regions. So what other part of this makes me have to test the regions? Tori? The quadratic. It's an inequality paired with a quadratic. That means we have to test the regions. So when it's something that needs to be factored paired with a crocodile mouth, you have to test the regions. So let's go and test the regions here. Now I need my reference numbers. Who remembers how do we get our reference numbers? Uh, mm -hmm. like yeah, we basically solve and that would be negative four and positive four. That's going to test our, re those are going to be our reference numbers for testing our region. So now we go ahead and we set it up. And I'm going to test all numbers that are less than negative four. Right, what's the next region I'm testing? So I'm testing numbers that are less than negative four. Philip? Um, you got it. And what's the last region I test? The last region I'm going to test. Noah? You got it. Oh, sorry, guys. See how the original had it greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to? So all of these should also have the equal to sign under it. All of them should also have the equal sign. Now, do we want our product to be positive or do we want our product to be negative? Going back to the original, do we want our product positive or negative? Danny? Positive. Positive because we're greater than zero, right? It's saying this has to be greater than zero. Here's the thing that everybody forgets. Here's the thing that everybody forgets. I'm multiplying this and this, right, to get my product. But what else am I multiplying this, pro uh, this sum and this difference by? So these two get multiplied together, but then we're also multiplying that by negative one. That negative one cannot be forgotten about. So what is this? A negative, a negative, a negative. Everything needs to be multiplied by that negative sign. Um, I'm not fucking sure. Why would we put the sign when we like our No, it's all greater than. Oh, because we're testing the, it's not about the, these testing the regions aren't about this sign. It's about um, all our possible numbers that we can, that can possibly be covered here. So my reference numbers are negative four and four. So I'm like, okay, what happens when I do all numbers less than negative four? What happens when I do all numbers bigger than four? 
what happens when I'm between these two numbers? So that's why we have to consider every type of number between those two. Okay, so now let's keep going. So now I need to test a number that is less than negative four. Let's go with negative five. If I have negative five, what's negative five plus four, positive or negative? Negative. And then I have negative five minus four, which again is negative. But now I have a negative times a negative, so this negative times this negative times this negative, which is negative. Did I want it to be negative or did I want it to be positive? Positive. So this is out. When you're testing three regions, if the first one is out, guess which other one is also going to be out? the last one. When you're testing three regions, if the first one is out, the last one will also be out. Do we still have to test that middle region? Yeah, let's test it now. So now I need a number between negative four and four. Can I choose zero? Yes. So we're going to have zero plus four, positive. What about zero minus four? Negative. But then I have a negative times a positive times a negative. Isn't that a positive? So this is our winner. So now we have to write it in set notation. And what else do we have to do? Graph it. We have to write it in set notation and then we have to graph it. So writing this in set notation, squiggly brackets, x such that, Negative 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4. Graphing it, negative 4, positive 4. We are every number between negative 4 and positive 4. Ty? Yep, could you just do hall pass, please? Okay, next one. Okay, so just thinking a little bit ahead right now, I'm going to subtract the y squared. So I'm going to have negative 5 is greater than y squared plus 5. Or you could look at it as y squared plus 5 is less than negative 5. I, I see a red flag right now, but let's say you didn't. Let's say you didn't see a red flag. What would we do now? Wouldn't we bring over that five? So then you'd have y squared plus 10 is less than zero. If we are less than zero, what kind of number do we have to be? Negative. Negative. If I'm taking a number and squaring it, even if it's negative, doesn't that turn it positive? So I'm taking a positive number, and then what am I doing? I'm adding 10 to that. Is there any way I will ever end up with a negative on this side? So guess what this is? No solution. No solution. This is not ever going to work out.
another one. I'm sorry? Yes, um, Danny. Is there a situation where, so clearly there's like where none of them work, but is there a situation where all of them work? Um, it would be in all real numbers, but I'm not going to give you any of those. But yeah, at that point, it would work. Then you would just put all real numbers if all of them worked. Tori? Um, well, that would also be another sign that you can't factor because then you try to move it over to the other side and be like, even if you moved it over to the other side, that'd be negative 10. So there's just so many red flags here where it's like, I can't do this. Okay, next one. I don't know what number we're up to. This was three, four. So you have to remember something from chapter one here. We have to remember something from chapter one. Um, if you have an absolute value and an inequality, does anybody remember if it were less than what it represents and if it's greater than what word it represents? Lila? Lila, sorry. You got it. Less than is and and greater than is or. So what is this telling us? This is telling us x squared is less than 16 and x squared is greater than negative 16. So you put the word and, you flip your inequality sign, you negate the number. Okay, so here we're going to have x squared minus 16 is less than 0. This is a quadratic inequality. What must we do? I don't want to worry about the other side right now. Just this side. Philip, what's up? I was like, did you guys think that there was both sides and that x is less than 4? No. Because if x is less than 4, um, we, if x is less than 4, do you agree negative 5 is less than 4? And then negative 5 squared is 25, and that's not less than 16. So it doesn't work. Okay, so guys, this is x squared minus 16 is less than 0. What type of problem is this, and how do you know? x squared minus 16 is less than 0. What type of problem is this, and how do you know? What must we do? Tori? This is a dot, but looking further down, what type of problem? So we are going to dot this. Test the regions. We are testing the regions. How do we know we're testing the regions? Quadratic inequality. Quadratic inequality, we test the regions. So we are x plus 4, x minus 4 is less than 0. My reference numbers are negative 4 and 4. Can somebody set up the regions that I'm testing for me? Can somebody set up the regions? Kai. X is what? Not greater than. X is less than negative 4. Good. And then? You got it. And the last one? X 
x is greater than 4. You got it. All right, let's choose a number less than negative 4. I'm going to choose negative 5. Negative 5 plus 4, do we all agree that's negative? Negative 5 minus 4. Oops. Yep. And negative times a negative, isn't that a positive? But this time my inequality was less than. Since my inequality is less than, do I want my outcome to be positive or do I want it to be negative? Negative. So guess what? This is out. If the first one's out, what else is out? The last one is also out. So now I need to test the middle. What's between negative 4 and positive 4? Zero's our perfect option. 0 plus 4 is positive. 0 minus 4 is negative. A positive times a negative is a negative. Are we done? No. Philip. Yep. Mm -hmm. If the first one works, the last one will work. You still have to test the middle, though. Okay, so now there's an and. So what does an and mean? It has to fit this solution and it has to fit this solution. It has to be represented in both solutions to make it in the final set. Remember, the and is very exclusive, okay? You have to be wearing blue and have long hair to come to my party, okay? You have to be in this solution and in this solution to make it to the party. But guys, we don't even need to do anything here. X squared is greater than negative 16. Is there a number that we can put in for X squared for X um, that would make this not work? Every single number we plug in, every single real number we plug in, wouldn't it work? Yeah, so what was this side going to be? All reals. So if this side is all real, and this side is limited to just negative four is less than x, which is less than four, what is our final solution set? It has to be represented in the first one and the second one to make it to the final set. Michael. Oh, well, remember in inequalities, what happens is you're going to, so for this one, Whatever is in this absolute value sign can be positive or it can be negative, right? So, well, this is x squared, so it's always going to be positive, which makes it null and void, but let's say it wasn't an x squared. So whatever in here can be positive or it can be negative. So what's happening is you take the positive version of this, which is what we did on the left side, but then you also take the negative version of it. And when you take the negative version of it, you divide by negative one and that flips the inequality sign. You're welcome. Okay, back to the problem. So if it has to be represented in this one and it has to be represented in this one, it would just be the first one, the more restricted one, right? Because isn't every number from negative four to four already represented in all real numbers? This is the more restricted one. This is our solution. So we're going to have x such that negative four is less than x, which is less than four. And then our number line would look like this. Open circle on negative four, open circle on four a line between them. Um, all right, one last one. All right, when we factor this, we're going to get x squared minus 25 and x squared minus 1. Do we agree on that? We are not done. What is this? 
What are these? Michael. Two dots. So then we're x plus 5, x minus 5, x plus 1, x minus 1. So now I'm not just testing three regions. Do you guys see this? We are now testing more than three regions. So I have a negative 5 as a reference. I have a positive 5 as a reference. I have a negative 1 as a reference. And I have a positive 1 as a reference. We are testing smallest number, negative 5. So x is less than negative 5. Then we are testing between the two smallest numbers. So we are going to test between negative 5 and negative 1. Then we are going to test between the next two smallest numbers. What are the next two smallest numbers? So I did negative 5 and negative 1, then it's going to be negative 1 and 1. And then we're going to test between the next two numbers. So I did negative 5 to negative 1, then I did negative 1 to 1. What am I going to do now? 1, 2, 5. Good, Philip. And then lastly, bigger than my biggest number. I will tell you that this will be positive, this will be negative, this will be positive, this will be negative, this will be positive. And um, do we want positive or negative? We want positive. So answer, answer, answer. The way you write this out. X such that X is less than negative 5 or negative 1 is less than x, which is less than 1, or x is greater than 5. All right. We are getting into our next unit. Anticipate, if everything goes as planned, where it never goes as planned, anticipate quiz Friday next week. Um, Oh, no, but you drop Friday, Thursday next week. Anticipate quiz Thursday next week. But like I said, not everything, it, it has rarely gone to plan yet. So we'll see how it goes. Well, it's just the quiz. So I'm breaking it up into little sections. Yeah, bad day to be out. Okay, so let's talk about the word limit. When you're on the highway and there and you're driving and there's a speed limit, does that mean realistically speaking, the world of real life? Like ideally that's what everybody should be driving, right? But what does it really mean if the speed limit is 65? What does that really mean? <laughs> Not that <hard. laughs> What does it mean? It means that you want to be somewhere around 65, right? You could be a little bit below 65. You could be a little bit above 65, but you want to be sort of hovering around 65. If you're doing 63, are you going to get a ticket? No. If you're doing 67, are you going to get a ticket? No. You're sort of just, that's sort of your, it's sort of the point that leads you in the direction. I want to be around this area. That's the same idea of limits from graphs. It's saying, okay, where do you, what are you really going to be around? It doesn't have to be a hard limit. It's sort of just, what is it approaching? What speed limit are you approaching? Or what part of the graph are you approaching? So the notation for limits So if we have the limit of f of x as x approaches a, and that equals some number that we call our limit. So this is the notation. You're not going to understand it until we do problems. You're not going to understand it until we do problems.
Okay, let's put a star. The limit of f of x as x approaches a does not depend on the value of f of a. Oh, sorry. Yes, f of a. Sorry, let's put necessarily, because it can. Does not necessarily depend on the value of f of a. Sometimes the value of f of a is undefined, but the limit does exist. I'm going to show you all of this. what I need to do. I need to pull up my sample problems up here. Do you always get the little demonic jokes? Do I get them? I've never heard a joke of the limit does not exist. Oh. oh. I watched Mean Girls a long time ago, but I don't remember any jokes. Sorry. Sorry to disappoint you. We'll watch it in class, and then we'll laugh about it after this chapter. <laughs> yeah, we'll watch it. It's a good movie. <laughs> well, then we wouldn't understand the joke. Sorry, I'm just pulling up the problems. I don't think it was a main part of the movie, the joke. It like kind of was though. <laughs> what do you mean you haven't seen the movie? Oh, okay. Oh. okay, guys. So let's look at this graph. Um, I know the lines didn't come out that well. Did the lines come out very well on yours or not really? Okay. Okay. Well, we can figure it out. So right here, we want f of negative three. So here's one. Let's make these a little skinnier. So here's one, two, three. So if we want f of negative 3, we go to our graph, we go to where x is negative 3, and we see the corresponding y value. What's the corresponding y value? Zero. Zero. The corresponding y value is 0. And then we want f of 0. So what does that mean? We go to where x is 0, and we go down to see where the y is, and where is it on our graph? Negative 1. Now we're looking at f of 2. So we go to where x is 2 on the graph, and then we go up the y. I don't know if you guys could see that, but that is 2. So f of 2 is 2. Uh, okay, what about f of 1? So you go to the x, you go to where x is 1. What is that? Isn't that an open circle? on f of 1. What does that mean when it's an open circle? Undefined. It is undefined. f of 1 is undefined. Right, f of negative 4. So we go all the way to negative 4, which is right over here. We go to where we see the point on our graph. And what does that correspond with? 2. Two. 
And now we're going to f of 5. Well, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What is on f of 5? What is this dashed line represent? An asymptote. The dashed line represents an asymptote. So what does that mean for that asymptote? It is also undefined. It means our graph can't go there. That's what the asymptote means. Okay, so this was all just plug in for x, tell me what you get for y. But now we're going to talk about the limit. So what we when we talk about the limit, we're asking what is happening on the left side and on the right side. So when it says, what is the limit as x approaches negative 3? So I'm going to go to where x is negative 3, which is right over here. And then this is what it talks about the corresponding y values. So as x approaches negative 3, coming from the left side, don't we agree that part of the graph is coming from the left side? Coming from the left side, it looks like it's approaching 0, right? Coming from the right side, this is the right side of the graph, what does it look like? It's also approaching 0. So what happens as the limit as x approaches negative 3, y is approaching 0. y approaches 0. Right, now we want to know what's happening at the limit as x approaches 0. So here's our x is 0. We look to our graph, right? Isn't that in our graph where x is 0, where I just highlighted in blue? So what do we do? We look at the left and we look at the right. So coming from the left to the point, coming from the right to the point, what's happening with the y? So coming from the left, it looks like y is approaching negative 1. Do we agree? Coming from the right, what does it look like y is approaching? Negative 1. So what's the limit as x approaches 0? Negative 1. All right, let's keep going. Now we want to know the limit as x approaches 1. Well, x approaches 1 is right here. Isn't that an open circle? But I'm not asking for f of 1. I'm not saying what is the value when x is 1. I'm saying what's happening to the graph as it approaches 1. What is the limit as x approaches 1? Well, from the left side, doesn't it look like we're approaching 0? What about from the right side? What does it look like we're approaching? 0, right? So as x is approaching positive 1, from the left and right side, it looks like y is approaching 0. It's OK that it is undefined at 1. We're saying, where does the graph seem to be heading towards at x? Yes? Wait, why do you say approaching 0? Um, as, I'm sorry, 1. Oh, no, you mean for the y, for the limit? Oh, uh, yeah. So at this point, isn't all the y 0 on the x-axis? So it's about, oh, if you're talking about y, it's not x's. Yeah, so okay. I'm giving you the x, and I want you to describe the y's behavior to me like yeah. what is the y doing so we know as x approaches zero y uh, sorry as x approaches one y is approaching zero is it okay that that point is undefined when we're talking about the limit yes it's absolutely okay because we are not asking what is defined at x equals one we're saying what is the limit as x equals one meaning what is the graph doing where is it approaching so now let's talk about what happens as x approaches positive 5. Well, we know positive 5 is an asymptote, right? It's right here. So we're never touching positive 5, but that's still okay. We're saying what is the graph doing as it approaches positive 5? What is the y values doing? Well, as we're approaching 5, where is it going? Negative infinity. Negative infinity, good Nico. It is approaching, it is going down forever. That is negative infinity. Okay, so now there's some notation we need to know about. Some more notation we need to know about. Okay. 
just finding an empty space to write for you guys. Okay, so we say the limit as x approaches c and then a little negative after it of f of x. What does this mean? So write it down and I'll explain to you what it means. So really, what have I added? This little negative after now. So this is telling us what is happening to the function as it's approaching from the negative side. Which side is the negative side? The right side or the left side? On a number line. Left side. So we're saying what is happening as we approach the function from the left side. Let's write that out. The function approaches the number from the left side. Which I say is the negative. So going left to right, negative to positive, what's happening? negative to positive. So that sort of shift from left to right is what we're looking at. Okay, now let's say I gave you the limit of f of x as x approaches c, and now I'm doing a little plus sign. Any guesses? From the right side, exactly. So this is telling us The function approaches the number from the right side. And that way we'd look from positive to negative, so sort of right to left. Can I go back to the examples? Are we done copying this? Okay, so let's do these. So the first one I'm asking you is what is the limit as x approaches negative 4, but what do I have after that? That little negative sign. What is, so the, what is that saying? I only care about the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the left side. So we're going to go to where negative 4 is. 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's negative 4, so here's the point on my graph. And there's another point on my graph right here, right? But I want to approach it from the negative side. So which one am I looking at, the bottom one or the top one, if I'm approaching four from the negative side? The top one, right? Doesn't that have a graph to the left of it? Does the right one, does the bottom one have a graph to the left of it? No. So we have to look at the top one. So as we're looking at the top one, so coming from the left to the right, as x approaches negative four, y will be one, two, three. Y will be three. So the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the left side will be 3. But now we're looking at the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the right side. So which graph are we going to look at this time, the top graph or the bottom graph? The bottom one. So now we're looking, okay, so add, look at our graph. As we're approaching negative 4 from the right side, where are we at? 1, 2. 
on the Y. And now I'm just saying, well, what's the limit as x approaches negative 4 in general? Well, when you look at approaching a number in general, you look from the left side and you look from the right side. But the problem is, from the left side, we're approaching 3. From the right side, we're approaching 2. Are these two the same? No. So if the limit from the left and the limit from the right are not the same, the limit does not exist. There we go. Enter Mean Girls. All right, so the limit does not exist. Um, so we put D and E does not exist. And let me just put a little star and explain to you why we put a D and E. If the limit is not the same from the left and the right, we say the limit does not exist. Okay, so now the rest of the period, we're just going to be doing more practice with this. Let's go on to our next graph. So this represents g of x, my graph. I want you to do these four, a, b, c, and d, and then we'll go over it. Yeah, because then I realized and then I switched up the graph after that. So tiny, really? Like that. It's like crazy though, because like like the beginning when I was like laying down, he was like, oh, like do you get headaches a lot on the back of your neck? I'm like, yeah. Like he's like, I can see like I'm gonna fix that. Really? Like, I get like, headaches in my sinuses. Like, I, I used to that too. Yeah. Will he fix that? Maybe. I don't I get, know. I get it on regular. Oh, oh yeah, me too. Temples. Mm -hmm. All the time. Really? I feel like that's stress headaches. I feel like yeah. the temples are stress headaches. You no, know, like I get it right over my eyes. I and I could pinpoint the trigger points, like I could find them. Yeah, that was the worst type of that. Yeah. When it's approaching one. So I did one from the negative, positive, one from the negative, and then just approaching one in general. Okay, so D is just saying, what is G of 1? Just like what we were doing last unit. So this is the graph. What's G? I'm sorry? Okay, put a start. Just take a guess and see what you think. Yes? Wait, I'm not sure I'm like... Doing it right? Do you count from where the point is if you count from 0? No, it's always 0. It's just not from 0. So this is 1 and this is 1, right? So this is the point one one. Yeah, so that, that mm -hmm. I don't know the answer, but they, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty
Okay, let's look at the first one. What is the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive direction? So, tell me, are we looking up here or are we looking down here? Up there. Up there, right, from the positive direction. Here is 1, so as x approaches 1 from the positive direction, do we agree it's right over here? So that is up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So as we're approaching x from the, uh, approaching 1 from the positive direction, y is 5. All right, what about as we're approaching 1 from the negative direction? Does it matter that it's an open circle? No. No, because we're asking for the limit. We're not asking you to define the point. So uh, the limit from the left side, where are we going? All the way to? We're up to 1. Okay, but now I'm just asking, what is the limit as x approaches 1 in general? Well, from the positive side, we're at 5. From the negative four side, we're at one. Are they allowed to be different? No. So what do we write? DNE. DNE does not exist. All right. So this one I wanted to take a I wanted you guys to take a guess and see how you did with it. Janine? You said undefined because this one is undefined. Okay, did anybody say anything else? Aaron? You said five because this one was defined at five. Did anybody say anything else? Okay, so it actually is five. So a closed will trump an open. So as long as there's something defined at that point, we can define it. So g of one is five. All right, let's come back into this. I'm bringing, look what, I'm never letting you guys forget anything. So I didn't give you a graph while well, I gave you the graph paper, but I gave you the function. Mm -hmm. And we have to remember how to graph this. What is this? Asymptote. There is an asymptote. Good job, Nico. An asymptote where? Uh, I mean, there's one like half of three, but negative three actually. Negative three. You got it. Opposite oh. sign. You were so close. So we're going to go to negative three. One, two, three, and we're drawing our asymptote. And then what is the graph itself? Does anybody remember what it's called? Not really. Not really? No, it's not. It's a rectangular hyperbola. So it looks something like this. Guys need to remember this, especially the rectangular hyperbola in this graph. Wait, what, really? Yeah. That's like the worst one, the way this one. That's like all we're going to be doing. Okay, so now we want to know, now that we have our graph, now we can figure it out. What's the limit as x approaches 2 from the positive direction? Um, oh, this all should have been 3s. Sorry, guys, let's change all these to 3s. I'm sad about this. We're going to change this as x approaches 3, uh, negative 3 from the positive direction, as x approaches negative 3 from the negative direction, as x approaches negative 3, and then h of negative 3. <laughs> okay. We changed all those. I changed a, b, c, and d. Sorry. Yeah, so we're approaching negative 3, but from oh, the positive okay. direction. Like no, so negative 3. Right. Negative 3 from the positive direction. So let's look at this. As we're approaching negative 3 from the positive direction, where is our graph going? Doesn't it look like it's going up forever? Positive infinity, get you mean. That's approaching positive infinity. Okay, now let's look at what happens as x approaches negative 3 from the negative direction. So here we're approaching negative 3 from the negative direction. 
But now where does it look like the graph is going forever? Negative. Negative infinity. You got it. Well, what happens in general of the limit as x approaches negative 3? Not Nico. Somebody else. What is the general limit as x approaches negative 3? So when we're deciding the general limit, you look from the left, you look from the right. But what happens? From the left, we're going to positive infinity. From the right, we're going to negative infinity. If they're not the same, is that okay? No. So what do we write when they're not the same? D and E. All right. H of negative 3. Isn't there an asymptote there? So what does that mean? It is undefined. And now we want to know what is the limit as x approaches infinity. So we're going over here, right? x is approaching positive infinity. What does it look like our graph is getting closer and closer to as x approaches positive infinity? Zero. Zero. What about as x approaches negative infinity? So here's our negative infinity. Again, what does it look like it's approaching? Zero. Right, let's keep going. All right, guys, you guys try this one all by yourself. Oh, actually, hold on. There's one of these I want to do with you. Where is it? Um, is there a limit as X approaches one anywhere? Letter E. Can we do letter E together? No. Okay. For letter E, do you see how it says X approaches positive one? Yeah. And then we look at our graph where X is positive one. We have a closed circle on four, right? But really, where is our graph? Our graph looks more in this area, right? So when we're talking about a limit and it has a random point, but then it has a graph, for the limit, you look at the graph. You look at like basically where most of the traffic is moving, right? You always have that outlier, right? You always have that outlier that might be going 20 on the highway or might be going, you know, 100 on the highway. But if most of the people are going around 60, 70, can't you guess that that's probably what the speed limit is? somewhere between there. So that's what it is. When we're asking for the limit of something, you're looking at the general trend of the, get, uh, the graph, not just one point that's an outlier. But if we're asking for a point to be defined, right, um, something to be defined, then we look for that closed circle. All right, so the limit as x approaches 1. Well, as x approaches 1, doesn't it look from the left that it's approaching 2 and from the right it's approaching 2? So the limit as x approaches 1 is 2. OK, you guys do the rest of these on your own. I think you could do the rest.
Are we ready? Does anybody need more time? All right, you all tell me, what did you get as the limit of X approaches four from the left side? The limit as X approaches four from the left side. Okay. Nobody? Aaron? I'm sorry? Infinity, yeah, how many people got infinity? Then why did nobody participate? It's not nice, guys. All right, what about as X approaches four from the positive side? Tice. Infinity. Thanks, Tice. All right, what about in general as X approaches four? Do we agree it is infinity since the top and bottom were both infinity from the left and the right? And now I'm asking to define the function at four. So what is F of four? four. F of four is four? Well, what happens when X is four? What is that? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing, F of four. Like oh, four. you're looking at F of one? Yeah. Okay, what is it when X is four? Isn't it an asymptote there? Yeah, so so what does that mean? Undefined, undefined. good. Nico, what is f of 1? Uh, it's 4. Is 4. f of 1 is 4. Close trumps is open, right? All right, what happens as x approaches positive infinity? x approaches positive infinity, y is heading towards? 0. Thanks, Janine. And as x approaches negative infinity, y is approaching? 0. Do we get it? Are we done? Do we want to stop yeah, here? Yeah. We understand limits from a graph. All right, so we will stop.